this is uh, Dr. Agarwal from the Booth Barton Parkinson Center. And today uh, we are going to discuss about the management of Parkinson's disease, including some uh, future treatment options uh, that are down the pipeline. So as we are familiar, Parkinson's uh, can present with stooped postures, small handwriting, decreased arm swing, some cramping, muscle slowness, and uh, some lack of facial expression. We know that the cardinal motor symptoms of Parkinson's include tremor, which is typically a rest tremor, stiffness, mainly involving the large joints, and it is typically a cogwheel rigidity, which is like a ratchety kind of a rigidity, bradykinesia, which is decrement in speed and amplitude of movement, and it can also be accompanied with balance problems. Now, this slide includes pretty much all of the currently approved medications for Parkinson's disease. On the top, we have carbidopa, levodopa, which is available in an immediate and extended release formulation. And it also is available as a combo of an immediate and a slow release called Ritari. It can, the levodopa can also be delivered through a tube so that it is directly delivered at the site of absorption, and that's called duopa. It goes through a J-tube. There are dopamine agonist medications in the form of pramipexol, ropinerol, rotigotine, which is a patch. And there are also apomorphine injections, which are used as needed. We have MAOB inhibitors, which are selegiline, rosagiline, and the newer cefenamide or zadaco. We have COMT inhibitors in the form of entacapone, a combo with carbidopa called Stilevo, tolcapone, and then amantadine, which is available as amantadine IR and amantadine ER or gocovary. This has a convenience that it's once a day and it provides coverage for the whole day. And then we have our newest medication, which is adenosine A2 antagonist or Lurians. I'll spend a little additional time on Norians because that's the low, latest Parkinson's met to get approval. So it works by a novel non-dopaminergic mechanism of action, and it is designed to improve off time. It has a long half-life of 83 hours. Possible side effects of the drug can be dyskinesias or dizziness. It is convenient with once a day dosing and it's available in two doses of 20 milligrams and 40 milligrams. It can be taken with or without food and it can be taken with one of the doses of carbidopa, levodopa if needed. Its main intent is to reduce off time and decrease on time without causing troublesome dyskinesias. Now, uh, the role of uh, levodopa you know, this always comes up that with so many other medication options, uh, should levodopa still be used? And it's a time-tested medication that's available since the 1960s. And le levodopa directly breaks into dopamine. And so it is the most direct way of treating some of the bothersome symptoms of Parkinson's. A common theme of all of the PD meds is they may cause nausea. Now, levodopa can improve the motor sign of Parkinson's by almost 60%. It is less effective in improving the non-motor symptoms. And also, it may not improve freezing or instability of gait. Now, the dopamine agonists, they are look-alike medications. So they, they act on the same receptors that dopamine acts on. So the brain thinks it's getting dopamine. And uh, though, because it's a lookalike, it is somewhat less effective than levodopa. However, one of the advantages is it's longer acting. And sometimes starting these meds early on may allow one to delay the need for starting levodopa. Your MAOB inhibitors, they act on the enzyme MAOB, which typically breaks down dopamine. 
So when you uh, give a medication that blocks the MAOB enzyme, then the dopamine uh, sticks around longer in the brain. So you can get, get more out of each dose of dopamine that you take or your intrinsic dopamine in the brain uh, is more effective since it takes longer to break down. However, these uh, are mild medications. They may be uh, beneficial early on uh, when the symptoms are mild, or they may be used as an add-on to levodopa to prevent wearing off. Amantidine, um, it is mainly now used for treatment of dyskinesias. And um, really, it's the only medication that's approved for dyskinesias. And one of the side effects can be levodo reticularis, which is like a mottling of the skin near the ankle areas. It can cause some ankle edema. And uh, it has to be used cautiously in older patients or patients who currently have hallucinations or memory problems. But for patients who are a candidate for amantidine or amantidine ER, which is marketed as Cocovery, patients can have improvement in on time as well as reduction in dyskinesias. Now, early Parkinson's disease, one can uh, either uh, use symptomatic treatment or uh, one may consider just using some supplement medications or some mild medications such as selagiline or asagiline. This is a very good opportunity for patients to participate in a clinical trial uh, because um, it is an ideal stage to test neuroprotective uh, treatments. Uh, some of the uh, newly diagnosed uh, Parkinson's trials that are going on in the area, and uh, these are available at our center, is a trial looking at Pramipexol ER. There's a SPARC trial, which is again looking at neuroprotective treatment. There is another trial. Uh, there are several other trials, as you can see, in Neurally, ABV. So there are about five different trials that are available for patients with newly diagnosed Parkinson's. Treatment for mild PD, where patients are just starting to get bothered by their symptoms. Uh, one can use either an MAOB inhibitor, which are convenient because they're longer acting and one may take them once or twice a day. One can use dopamine agonist or amantidine. However, it is also appropriate to directly start carbidopa, levodopa if the symptoms are bothersome or if people are not a candidate for some of the other meds. Now, one of the questions that comes up is when should one start carbidopa, levodopa? And there have been, um, there used to be this hypothesis of levodopa sparing, which means that sometimes we, should, we used to try to push starting carbidopa levodopa for as late as possible. However, um, now as we've done several trials, uh, it shows that whether you start levodopa early or whether you start it late, by the end of seven years, people had the same amount of dyskinesias. Whereas the patients who delayed starting levodopa, they did not have good control of the Parkinson's medications uh, for all those years that they did not start the med. So at this point, uh, the consensus is that either strategy is fine. One could start with one of the other meds or could start with carbidopa, levodopa. It depends on individual circumstances, personal goals, one's profession, and how much the current meds are bothering a person. Now, treatment of uh, moderate Parkinson's disease this is when symptoms are no longer controlled with non-levodopa medications, which is your dopamine agonists or your MAOP inhibitors. It is appropriate to start treatment with carbidopa, levodopa, which continues to be the most effective treatment for Parkinson's disease. And patients can expect to at least 30% improvement in their stiffness and their slowness. Tremor may have a more variable response whatever dose of carbidopa, levodopa people are on, if they're excited, nervous, or under pressure of time, they may find that the tremor breaks through. It may not help much with balance or speech or swallowing. 
some of the um, clinical trials that are currently recruiting for Parkinson's are Parkinson's with insomnia, in which uh, there's a medication called Soborexin that's been tested in a double-blind fashion. We have uh, Parkinson's with motor fluctuations in which they are looking at a medication sort of similar to Ritori, but even more long-acting. And then uh, there are uh, treatment options or clinical trials available for Parkinson's with orthostatic hypotension. There are also trials that are testing medications for dyskinesias, which can be added on to current dose of carbidopa, levodopa. There are also meds that are being tested for constipation. Now, this is a very exciting genetic trial, uh, which is uh, in which basically any patient with Parkinson's disease uh, or someone who has a strong family history of Parkinson's can enroll. And uh, patients basically just need to give um, their blood. It's a one-time blood draw. And uh, basically five or six drops of blood get placed on a card and then it gets mailed out in a de-identified fashion. And patients can get their entire genetic profile for Parkinson's disease. And this can be for patients in any stage of Parkinson's can be a candidate for this trial. Now, once one is on the Parkinson's meds after several years, sometimes patients will notice some involuntary movements in the form of dyskinesias, and they may notice fluctuations in the form of the medication working, called on time, when the meds don't work, called off time. So some of the treatment options for treatment of off time are MAOB inhibitors, dopamine agonists, COMT inhibitors, Ritori, um, and also surgical options, interventions in the form of deep brain stimulation surgery. If the main intent is to decrease dyskinesias, then the options are addition of amantadine, including amantadine ER or recovery, deep brain stimulation, and also DOPA. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Are we all right? Yes. Keeping us good pace. I was. What? <laughs> Am I speaking too fast? Or? No. I was trying to hold that cough with a tickle back in. Yeah, you're, let's see, you're... Half bit. No, yeah, you're perfect. And you got... Um, About... Um, 18, yeah, you got like 18 minutes. Okay. Nice. Now, treatment for Parkinson's disease is always individualized and no one size fits all. So it can vary according to if one wants to be very functional at work for five years, one might decide that carbidopa levodopa is the best option because it provides very immediate robust benefit. <clears throat> Some might decide that they want to wait, hold off on carbidopa levodopa because they are so concerned about dyskinesias. For some patients, tremor is their most bothersome symptom. And so they may decide to take a medication that's got more robust tremor control. And so really, uh, this is where uh, you need to discuss with your physician or your provider what symptoms are most bothersome to you. And um, the two of you can come up with a plan that's individualized for you. And again, there's no one medication that is a better choice than the other. It depends on individual circumstances. Oh, do I? Okay. 
PD can have uh, motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms. The non-motor symptoms are really what's hiding uh, below the tip of the iceberg. And sometimes these non-motor symptoms can be more problematic than the motor symptoms. Some of these non-motor symptoms can be constipation, decreased sense of smell, sleep problems, depression, anxiety, fatigue, apathy, pain, including worsening of pain when meds are wearing off. And also there can be slowness in thinking and multitasking. <clears throat> now the uh, one of, uh, some of the most problematic symptoms can be overactive bladder. And I've outlined over here several of the medications that are that can be used for overactive bladder. The one medication I would caution about is oxbutynin because a tiny amount of oxbutynin can cross through the blood brain barrier. And sometimes it can cause worsening of memory problems or dry mouth or confusion for patients with Parkinson's. <clears throat> a relatively newer medication is something called Merabetric or Merabegron which works by a different mechanism. It's not anticholinergic and it may have a particular advantage in uh, better tolerability for overactive bladder in Parkinson's. <clears throat> Another common symptom in Parkinson's can be orthostatic hypotension, which is basically a feeling of dizziness or lightheadedness upon standing. This tends to be more problematic in the more warmer months and uh, I would encourage adequate hydration. And provided one does not have congestive heart failure, uh, this would include at least six cups of water a day. It helps to stand up very slowly. Sometimes it helps to count to 10 before one starts walking. It helps to lay down at night with the head end elevated. Some of the medications which can be used are fludrocortisone, midodrin, and North, Northera is, uh, it has a specific indication for Parkinson's disease with orthostatic hypotension. <clears throat> Constipation tends to be a very common and early problem with Parkinson's disease. And some things that can help are again, increased hydration, increased fiber intake, adding a stool softener such as docusate sodium if that's not enough, one can consider adding Senna or Miralax. Uh, enemas only if the above oral options fail. <clears throat> it helps to have, keep the stool soft and uh, to in general have a high fiber diet. Patients with Parkinson's disease can have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. And um, some of the treatment options that are typically used for sleep can be problematic in Parkinson's disease, such as using meds such as diazepam or Ambien. These meds can cause confusion and falls at night. Uh, one of the <clears throat> drugs um, that, has, uh, that was uh, approved by the FDA a few years ago is something called Belsomra or Sovorexent. And that is being tested in a clinical trial at our site. And we are still looking for volunteers. Uh, for anyone who has trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, and who currently does not have significant sleep apnea. <clears throat> now, uh, cognitive problems such as multitasking can be sometimes difficult in Parkinson's disease. And some of the things that can help be helpful are adaptive strategies such as making notes and uh, relying on a calendar. Uh, certainly uh, working with occupational therapy or sometimes speech therapy that can teach you how to keep notes or memory exercises can be helpful. <clears throat> there are medications that can help with cognitive problems. And some of the meds currently available are donipazil and rivastigmine. Nemenda, though it's not approved for the purpose, can also be combined with aricet or rivastigmine. <clears throat> Anxiety can be common in Parkinson's disease, especially when patients are wearing off. Sometimes patients can also feel depressed, withdrawn, sad, 
and this can be associated with significant worsening in quality of life and it also increases caregiver burden. <clears throat> Currently available antidepressant medications can be quite effective for treating depression. And um, sometimes it can be effective at uh, quite low doses. One, um, one of the trials had shown amitriptyline to be quite beneficial. However, one has to use caution because amitriptyline can sometimes worsen constipation um, in the setting of Parkinson's. <clears throat> Now, hallucinations uh, can be quite common in Parkinson's disease. Sometimes they're quite mild, and it might just be a feeling that there's someone else in the room. It can be, uh, one might feel that there is something in the periphery of their vision, but when they turn and look, there's nothing. Or one might see small little critters or small children. Um, it is very important if one has hallucinations to discuss that with your provider because there are several <clears throat> treatment options uh, that can be available, including reducing or discontinuing some of your current medications. And there are also medications available for treatment of hallucinations in the form of pimavanserin or nuplicid. And there are other medications such as quetiapine or Seroquel. Another medication that's quite effective is Clozeril. However, it has a problem that one does need regular blood monitoring on Clozeril. <clears throat> now, fall prevention uh, is something very, very important in the planning of treatment for Parkinson's. Uh, we discussed already that some of the medic that the current PD meds are not very effective at improving balance. So serious falls can lead to injuries, including head injuries, broken joints. And so uh, one has to, some, some of the things that contribute to it is freezing of gait, imbalance, shuffling steps, uh, drop in blood pressure on standing up. <clears throat> some of the general safety guidelines are keep a phone on your person at all times or Purchase a, purchase a life alert system. It gives a great peace of mind, not just to you, but your family members. Wear proper non-slip footwear at all times. <clears throat> Use a cane or a walker or a wheelchair, anything that helps you feel more safe. Sometimes people avoid using assistive devices because they think they want to be independent. But actually using an assistive device can help people maintain independence because it prevents a fall and it prevents hospitalization. Also, it helps to pause for a few seconds whenever you move, whenever you change your posture from sitting to standing or from laying to sitting. Take it a little slower, pause, count for three seconds before you change your position. Also, uh, remove all throw rugs. They look pretty, but they are fall hazards because the foot can get caught, the corner can get overturned, one might, um, one might entangle the uh, wheels of their walker with it. Also, arrange power cords, add night lights. And for steps, all, it helps to have handrails on both sides rather than just one side good lighting on the stairwell. And then it said, go up with your strong leg and go down with your bad leg. Also in the kitchen, uh, use your, put your commonly used items um, on a level that's easy to reach so that you don't have to reach up or down below the counter. Hold on to the counter whenever you're reaching also, wherever you can put grab bars in your house, um, it's safer to do that. And outside the home, also good lighting. It's common to fall on the steps that lead into the garage. And very often people don't have handrails there. So it does help to install, install sturdy handrails on the steps only if there are one or two steps. Bathrooms are a very, very common site for a fall because um, it can be uh, wet and then uh, the surfaces are hard. So it's always good to have good lighting. 
uh, going to the bathroom, also install grab bars. The towel hangers are not enough because if one grabs them during the case of a fall, they just will come off the wall and one would fall with it. So install proper grab bars. And by that, we mean the ones that are installed inside with studs rather than just your <clears throat> ones that are uh, fitted with suction cups because in case of a bad fall, the suction cups will just come off the wall. Also, when possible, use a shower chair or a bench. And then if it's hard to get on and off the toilet, use a built up seat for the toilet with arms. And then um, in conclusion, I would like to say that don't try to manage your Parkinson's alone. You can reach out and have a team that can be helpful. And your team can involve your primary doctor, your neurologist, a speech, occupational, physical therapist, psychologists and social workers, your nurse, nurse practitioner, or a physician assistant. And also reaching out to your family and community support groups helps, helps people to learn from each other. So in summary, the approach to Parkinson's can be to find a team you trust, good education, so where you keep up with new developments in the field, where you exercise regularly, mindfulness, meditation, gratitude for the things you are still able to do, and participating in research because the meds we have today are present because someone with Parkinson's participated in research to make these meds available. And if people participate in research today, they'll have meds not only for themselves in a few years from now, but also for future generations. So with that, I'll uh, stop. And um, I believe um, we are, uh, with that, I'll end the presentation. Thank you. Perfect. Nicely done. Right on time, too. Thank you so much. Okay, let's, uh, this is pause, right? So we should stop. Yeah, so you did that, and then let's um, stop. I think stop recording. I'll go back to more. Don't mean to do it. It's such a pain. I don't know why. I have to like hold it up here or something. Yeah, she'll be able to edit a little bit, right? Because I forgot that there's no questions here, so I'll just um...